<laughs> it's like Blink-182. Yeah. 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 Good to go? All right, we are uh, very, very excited about this one tonight. I have to tell you this, Amy Lee. Amy Lee from Evanescence. Hi. Peabody Opera House yes. show tonight. So it was so great when we announced this particular show because it was almost like a firework that went off twice because people were like, oh, Evanescence is coming back, and they'd be excited. And then, oh, it's with an orchestra. Ooh, you That's know cool. what I mean? People yeah. were so excited about awesome. this and playing this beautiful Peabody Opera House. It's the, it's the perfect place for it. You've got to play some pretty great venues during this run with the orchestra, right? That's right. It's been uh, a whole new world. Normally, you know, what we gravitate towards and what I want is, like, no seats in the house, like, no built-in seats. we got to have people standing up. It's rock and roll, you know. Everything about it is this whole different vibe, and this time for the first time and you know, I don't know, over 15 years, it's like, okay, we need, like, classy, beautiful <laughs> theaters with seats, and we're going to make a program, and I might wear some fancy clothes. It's going to be all different. It's been really beautiful. We played some historical places. One of my favorite theaters um, in, in my hometown in New York is in Brooklyn. It's called the King's Theater, and we just got to actually play there after, you know, I'd only been there seeing – other sure. things that I'm a big fan of. I saw Bjork there. I saw Eric Badu there. Um, and it was such an experience. Really, it's been very fun and, and fun in a different way, like a, almost like, whoa, like out-of-body experience kind of cool thing to do this. Because it's not, you know, this is not the, and I don't want to use the word typical. No, but no, yeah. This is not the, the normal run. There's a lot yeah. that goes into this. And, and I want to get to that in just a second. But I want to know when the idea for all of this first came about, the, the reimagining of the songs and then the orchestra and all of that. I want to kind of know the genesis of that. Um, it just sort of happened one piece at a time. I, the thing is, it's not so much like, a brand new crazy idea like if we did like a polka version of all of our songs or something it's coming from um a big piece of the core heart of like just the original thought of of evanescence in the first place the the whole vision i remember from being very young it was always about this um combining of a heavy rock band and these sort of industrial programming sounds and this cinematic score thing with the um with the big strings um so this is you know, we've had all this time to generally be at rock radio, you know, and be serving, like, making a rock album. That's the genre that we're always in. Um, I really wanted to show another side of our music that's always been there and accentuate it in a way that is it, actually very metal, <laughs> if you think about it. It's very uncomfortable. Um, it's something that's dangerous and difficult, and all of us are outside our comfort zones and, and challenging. It's, it's challenging in a lot of cool ways. I get to play the piano in a way that I never have um, live before. You know, it's sort of all those things uh, accentuated that are generally in the background. I'll put up in the forefront. I worked it. I, I read that you had to kind of get your sort of piano chops back yeah. a bit yeah. because this was sort of a level that you hadn't played at for a while. Not a lot. Yeah, no. I mean, I took classical piano when I was in school sure. and stuff. But um, this tour kind of what it demands from me personally is to have the kind of focus that normally I only have to have in the studio or like alone in my house. Mm -hmm. It's different than when you're live. You need to keep things fairly safe, you know, generally so that when something comes flying at you or your in-ear monitor breaks or anything else distracts you, like you've still kind of got it in the pocket, like you have the muscle memory to know what to do. But since this is um, different and like musically like challenging, there's a lot to think about. It just requires more focus and it feels really good. It's like meditative. Well, and I bet you very rewarding. I mean, I, yeah, I would bet you you get is. done with a yeah, night. Yeah, when you pull it off, it's just like. <laughs> right, right. Well, well and, and that, that kind of leads me back to a, a question you almost kind of answered there in the last time. but. It has to be incredibly different for you with different cues and things playing with the band as opposed to now playing with the orchestra. Yeah. How long of a process was that and you kind of getting, you know, getting used to this whole other thing behind you? That's part of what's so cool about the challenge, actually, is that we didn't get a lot of time to prepare. Um, really? Well, every day that we play, we're not touring with this group. We have a different group of musicians in every town. Wow. So tonight on stage, um, when we play our songs, 
most of them will be doing for the first time all together as a group in front of the audience. So it's definitely like a little bit different and very live in a new way than it ever has been. The, the, the ability of a musician <laughs> to be able to do that. Well, to them me, too. Is, is, There's a lot of very incredible. talented people on stage with us. And they, you know, they're working at a very high level. Yeah. Like all these people have been doing a lot more school than I have. Um, <laughs> right. But they're only really looking at the music, most of them, for the first time today. They're practicing right now. So we, we carry our own conductor. And she goes through the whole set. She has about an hour and a half with them. Um, not about exactly an hour and a half with them. They're union um, every day. So they just basically have a chance to do each song once. Um, and then we join for the last half hour and just sort of sound check it and do three or four songs uh, in front of the fans. So we're never really alone, like getting to just focus and practice. So it's cool though. It just makes you have to step up. Like a Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to, uh, Imperfection is such a great track uh, from, from the new album. And you know, there's two of them on there. How did the new ones make it on? Um, well, it's just a choice. Well, first of all, um, Hilo, the other song, uh, we've had in the bank for a long time. I wasn't quite finished, but it's just the song that never fit anywhere that I've been sort of holding on to and waiting for to find its right home for 10 years. Um, so it's this weird thing that like, I feel very close to already that I've had to listen to with like my family and my friends. Um, to now finish it out and have the orchestra on it, that's what it needed. It needed that beautiful, luscious emotion uh, that David Campbell put on there. But I wrote that song, it's, it's perfect that it's coming around. I wrote it with um, our producer on this album, the guy that did all the programming, Will, who's with us now. So we're getting to like do our song. It was like our first collaboration together 10 years ago. Um, and then the other one, Imperfection, is brand new. We just wrote it this year. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very like collaborative between Will again um, and also David Campbell, um, the arranger, who he's done all the string arranging for Evanescence for all of our albums. Mm -hmm. But um, this one, you know, we went in going, okay, this is our music, this is your, your our arrangements and our songs. Like, let's go in and go really deep and just like rip them apart and elevate them to another place together and make something new. So for all of it and, and the new one included, um, he was a real part of what laid the foundation of what was gonna happen. So it gave the music and the writing and everything like a chance to grow in some different directions. I'm very fascinated when I hear artists talk about these songs that they're so close to, mm -hmm. that they've been sitting on for five yeah. or 10 years or however many records. Is that at all, is, uh, is disappointing kind of the word? Because you love this thing so much, but then for whatever reason, you don't hear it with these other things that you love so much. Well, you want to share it. Like, I always want to share it really bad. Mm -hmm. um, I I like to just play music in my house for people, and, and I'm, I'm close enough to some people, like, in my life. I'm like, oh, listen to this thing. Check it out. It's, like, half done, but, like, you'll get it. Come on, like, have a drink of wine. <laughs> like, you're going to like it better after you have a little bit more wine. Um, and that's sort of, I think that's good for you. You get cool feedback from people that aren't musicians that are just like music listeners and your friends that can be honest with you. But um, yeah, when you have something that you love and you're dying to get out, but you just, it's not all the way there. I, I do respect songs enough that, and, and definitely like I've put out enough that I feel like there's a real standard. I'm definitely very, um, I don't want to say critical of myself, but I have a high standard for everything has to be really awesome before I put it out. Right. Um, I love the song a whole lot. I really love the lyrics and I knew that it wasn't quite finished for a long time and I didn't know what it needed because when we originally wrote it, we had sort of a, a, like a, almost like a solo vibe idea, like electronic thing in our heads that didn't ever happen. So then I didn't know what to do with it and it wasn't exactly an Evanescent song. But then when it, we all wrote that crazy bridge instrumental section and then the idea of the strings coming in and giving it the, um, the depth and the emotion that it was missing, then it became an Evanescence song. I was like, okay, now it's finished. Now we can do this for real. And it's really exciting. So the patience <laughs> yeah. completely paid off in yeah. the end. Yeah. Absolutely so. So, And one, one thing that I found very interesting as I was reading about this, you're touring uh, with your husband and with your, with your son, yeah. uh, I believe. That sounds comforting and chaotic yeah. all at the same time. Both, yeah. They're not here yet. I'm, I'm without them this week. Um, but this last leg of the tour, they're out the whole five or six weeks. It's awesome. It's exactly what you described. It's crazy because like his schedule is so different, but it's so like healing in my heart to not, it, it's kind of like I have to only focus on one thing because both things take so much focus. 
and he's getting old enough now where he can travel and he can adapt and like he can hang out a sure. little bit. So um, it really heals something to be able to be the mom version of me and the on stage, the work me in the same day. Yeah. Like the days are really full, but they're really fulfilling. I mean, that's a very complete day. Too, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, and you earn that time off, too. Yeah, those, exactly. the, those naps, those those good oh. stretches of sleep, you definitely earn those. And plus, too, once they get to about three, four, they're their own kind of little people yeah. who are most of the time pretty flipping hilarious on yes, top of it. That's so there's very some, true. some you have levity kids. On, on there as you well. You know, absolutely yes. so. Yes. <laughs> He's wonderful. I love having him around. Well, Amy, you know, we, we thank you so very much for your time. And like thank I you. said, we we have been excited about this one since the minute that it was announced. And, awesome. and, and look forward to, to seeing you in the beautiful Peabody Opera House Thank tonight. you. Very Amy happy Lee to be here. from uh, Evanescence, thank you so much. Thank you.